really happy to be back here uh, talking uh, to you about KX Developer and KX Analyst. There is a real sense of, of deja vu for me uh, being here tonight. It was five, six years ago. My Google inbox foo failed me, so I, I can't remember exactly. But I was here talking to you about Ivy, uh, something that we'd built in Ottawa, a group of us, to do um, interactive analytics across uh, cyber data. Uh, and in the process of doing that, had built some other development tools uh, and we're showcasing that and, and showing that to you. Three years ago, we joined FDKX and we've taken this thing that was called Ivy several years ago and we've morphed it and changed it into what we're here to talk to you about tonight, which is KX Developer and KX Analyst. So, you know, what are these things? Rebecca is going to give you a, a quick tour through the core feature set, uh, but really uh, what they are is a set of tools designed to make you productive within a KDB environment. Tools that you generally have in other languages that for a while may have been lacking or needed some uh, tweaks uh, within KDB. Things like unit testing frameworks, uh, Linter, QuickCheck, which if you're familiar with Haskell, property-based testing system, things of that nature, uh, coupled with uh, analytic tools, visual query, data transformation, uh, ETL, all these things, but all done natively in Q, at least where possible, made e easily accessible from Q and KDB so that we can stay in the language that we love and do things there and we don't have to go into other languages if we don't have to or don't want to. So the best part is, uh, they're yours. Uh, KX Developer, as of now, uh, is available for download from code.kx.com. Uh, anyone, you can take that out with a KOD license, you can try it at work, uh, take it for a spin. As I say, it's the developer set of tooling. Uh, there's also KX Analyst, which includes all the goodness of developer, uh, but also contains things like the ETL, the data transformation, visual query, uh, that tool set as well. Rebecca, as I say, is gonna take you through a tour. Uh, we do view this as a beginning. Um, so we're looking forward to feedback from the community, uh, things that you want to add, things that you want to delete. Uh, these things are there for you to make you more productive, to help you out at work. So we welcome any and all uh, feedback. And with that, I'll hand it over to Rebecca. Um, so I'm going to go end to end. I'm gonna install uh, Analyst. This is Analyst that you're gonna see now. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a small 15 minute uh, data science project for everybody. Uh, so I've already downloaded Analyst. I've got this little zip file here. And I'm just gonna make, oh, yeah. And I'm just gonna move this guy into here. And I'm gonna unzip him. So if I navigate into the directory that we just made, I've got a little install script. So uh, my guess would be that that's what I need to run to actually get the get it all running. So let me do that. It's gonna ask me a couple of things. I'm gonna accept the defaults. Uh, feel free to change them yourselves whenever you're doing it. Yes, my data, it's gonna use a default port. I'm gonna start up in a second and I'm gonna have authentication running. So now that that's actually installed, it's telling me if I add this alias to my, you know, uh, my bash profile or something, I'll be all good to go. So it's pretty um, straightforward. I'm gonna do that now. And I should be in, in two seconds. So I'm gonna set the username. And I'm good to go. Here's my cue prompt. And if I take this here, and bring it to this. Oh yeah, also, I'm not connected to the internet. This is all on my laptop. So you can see this here with my little empty Wi-Fi and my sad dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is not the right thing. Uh, well. well, this one's not using KOD. This one, <laughs> this, I've got, I've, I'm, I luckily have a, um, oh, let me just get that. I luckily have a license on my computer. It's one of the, major perks of working for KX. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh dear, how do I get this to go away? There we go. I recommend everybody try it. Uh, so it brings me to this, uh, this, you know, this is my entrance, my portal in. I'm gonna create a new workspace. I'm gonna call it Taxi. The reason why it will become apparent. And I'm gonna open it up. So here's my little prompt, two plus two just to prove it's all running. Uh, for those of you who like, there is also a dark theme, which I prefer, but I'm not gonna use because it's impossible to see right now. For those of you in the back, um, and I'm good to go. 
what am I actually going to run here? I've got some stuff in Git that I'm going to pull in. Let me just do that because it integrates with Git, which is nice. Um, and I've got that on my local computer. So let me get that. Uh, Git. Oh yeah, okay, it's demo taxi. There's a 50 pitch chance. There we go. So now I've pulled in all the stuff that I need that was in my Git. Um, and I'm gonna basically walk through this little demo that we have. So actually at the end, um, the, this demo that I'm gonna walk through now is gonna, it's a, on GitHub for people to uh, kind of go through and there's a couple of different uh, training. Um, th there's also a training repo that you can get and download and if you're trying to familiarize yourself with it, I'd recommend just kind of walking through those. Uh, I'm gonna look at the New York taxi data uh, some of you might be familiar with it. It's, uh, it's basically all the, the records from the yellow cabs, the green cabs, and for hire vehicles. So let me go and get that. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like. Again, we're kind of dealing with a little bit of a constrained space issue with the screen, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you want to see it as a string. And I've actually got it all stored in a partition database on my local computer. Uh, it, they're in little month partitions. Um, this FHV is a for hire vehicle. So that's like, that's like your Lyft or your Uber or anything like that. Um, and then, or even like limousines, if you're fancy. And then the green are the, I think, I think, so I've only just gotten here recently enough, but I think the green ones are the ones that'll take you from New Jersey and stuff like that. Um, they're not actually allowed to pick up people in the city. Um, and then the yellow ones are the standard, like yellow medallion cabs that you'll see around the place. Um, so if I go into my process view here, um, you can see kind of what I have in my workspace. At the moment, I've just got this sample table. But if I go ahead and uh, load in this and refresh, you can see that I have those now in my, um, in my actual process. So uh, one of the handy things about uh, well, one of the reasons why I particularly like this new IDE is because we now have visuals, something that, you know, you kind of want <laughs> at the end of a, of, a, of a bit of data interrogation. You kind of want to show people what's going on. Uh, so I've just jumped in. Uh, I, I did that kind of quickly, but I just chose to inspect this table, and it's brought me to this pop-up. So I can choose uh, from a range of different uh, graphs here. I'm going to do a quick histogram try to get a quick idea of what's actually happening. I'm going to see it broken down by month, and I want to, just to get a little bit more information, I'm going to include the average uh, total fare that people had. So I run this, and here's my uh, quick visual. So you can see a couple of things in the data right now. <clears throat> you can see that, um, in general, when it's winter and it's cold, people don't really like walking, so they take more taxis. Uh, or lifts or whatever, and then in the summer, uh, that you know you take far less. But if you look here, the total amount is uh, actually a little bit higher, which makes sense because if you're going to bother taking a taxi when it's really nice outside, you're probably going somewhere a little bit further away. Uh, whereas in the winter, you, you you'll go two blocks if it's Latin. So that's a quick example. Um, but let's actually uh, look at it a little bit more um, granularly because. You know, you can see from my directory structure here that I've actually got three separate tables. Let's pull that all together into kind of this one table um, because they, they, there's different amounts of data for the different types of um, the different types of tables. So now I've got a breakdown by date and the, the actual type of uh, vehicle that it was. So I can see actually, you know, the total um, total number of rides on that date, and I can aggregate it a little bit further uh, by month. So. Let's do a really quick inspection of that and see what we get when we look at it like on a per month, per, uh, per day basis. So you can see that in general, um, the kind of amount of rides are you know, fairly consistent throughout the different months. Um, but what you'll notice is that actually uh, the yellow cabs start losing out to these four hire vehicles. Um, it's probably clearest on this one here. You can see that there's a crossover and they actually become a little bit more uh, popular. This was in 2016, so the rise of, um, of all of that. If I, yeah, and th these guys down the bottom, these green guys seem to be fairly consistent. They drop off a little bit, but it, you know, they, I suppose, 
um, there's not as much competition where they are. They're working in a different domain. Um, what we will notice is that there's something very odd happening here. There's some event that actually impacted across the board all the different um, modes of you know, higher vehicle transportation. So let's you know, have a little bit of a look at that and try and figure out exactly what caused it. Um, because you, know, you see something like that in your data, you kind of want to know what happened. Um, so I can actually look at this table here. Let me go in to inspect him. Um, and so now this time I'm just going to do a quick line chart for each, uh, for each of my different types of taxi. So I'm going to do it for every day and I'm going to give that number and I'm going to make sure that I've got a different color for each of my lines so that I can easily differentiate. Perfect. So this is it, the kind of the blown up version of that um, graph that we saw. And I can actually go in and, well, I can save this. So let me just save this. Um, I'm going to put it in my plots. And I'm going to call it daily counts line. It's going to tell me I already have it because I'm prepared. Um, but I'm going to overwrite it. <laughs> so I can actually drill down from here and get a bit of a closer view or, you know, you know, continue to kind of look at that um, in a little bit more detail. Uh, but I think this isn't going to tell me that much. The, the data that I have isn't enough to answer this question. So what I really need to do is I need to go and get some more data, um, as is often the case. So I've gone and I've gotten uh, weather data because, you know, this was a pretty unilateral effect across all of them, regardless of um, which type of vehicle it was. So there's a you know, I have a bit of a hunch that it could be data. So I go and I get this open weather map data from Kaggle, and I'm trying to now combine the two data sets together. So first things first, I need to get my data into the actual, um, into the actual, you know, environment. Something that I think a lot of people who are new to the language sometimes can struggle at. You know, you don't want people falling at the first hurdle. So let's give everyone a little bit of a hand. So I'm going to go and I'm going to use my table importer, which is going to make everything very easy for me. Um, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. I think it's a little hard for people to see at the moment. OK, uh, so I've got a couple of options here in terms of what you know the data uh, format would be for if I wanted to import it. And if I've got an ODBC driver, I can plug that in here as well. Um, I pointed at my file. It kind of it shows me you know what I would expect, and I can view that as just the the raw file format if I like. Um, but let's say we'll continue from here. I'm pretty confident it's a CSV file. Uh, it makes a best guess at the different types of the data. Um, I know for a fact that pressure isn't measured in minutes, so I'm going to go and change that to to be a long. Um, so now that I've got that, I can continue on. And I can choose what happens next. So do I want to, for, you know, it could end here. It could be an import. Um, but let's say I want to go a little bit further. I've noticed something strange about my data, or I just want to continue to manipulate it. I'm going to choose to transform it, um, which brings me into this nice, uh, this nice kind of environment where I can actually build, you know, a full workflow for my data. So let's do that. I'm going to do a new action on my data. Um, so the accent might have given me away, but I'm not from here. So <laughs> I don't know what this Kelvin stuff is about. Um, I'm going to go, or not Kelvin, Fahrenheit. <laughs> 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 or maybe it's Kelvin, actually. I don't know, really. Um, yeah, it probably is Kelvin, actually, in my defense. Thank you. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something to this. It looks a bit, you know, not, not what you would want. So I'm going to use a custom function. I'm going to apply that to my temperature. And I'm just going to pull the, the function out of here. So yes, Kelvin. Um, and I can apply that. So now you can see that this is a more reasonable kind of uh, temp temperature measure. It's Celsius for me, which is the optimal. Um, and I can see what that would look like. You know, I can kind of toggle back and forth between these. Um, so what, when I choose to save this, I can send it on to Bob. And Bob can have a look and see what's actually happening here. Um, Finally, then, I'm going to actually bring this into memory. So I get to choose what, what kind of format do I want my output to be. 
if it's KDB, how would I like it to be saved? I'm gonna bring it in to memory. I'm gonna call it NYC weather and I'm gonna finish. Uh, now all I need to do is just quickly run that transform. I zoom back here, uh, I refresh and then there's my table. But you know, like any good demo or cookery show, uh, here's one I made earlier. So you can do more advanced things. Uh, so here's a more full uh, workflow where I, I actually have data from two sets of sources. So I've got my weather, I've got my yellow taxis. Um, I can, like I said, do those actions. I can do a little bit more and then I can do uh, more complicated things like joins because obviously we're a time series database and we love our joins. Uh, so this really kind of takes any of the sting out of, out of managing that. You just choose your type of join and you can literally click select uh, the types of columns that you care about. Um, you saw me applying a function to a column in the table. You can also apply a function to the, over, to the complete table. Um, that's what this purple node here is. Um, and then you can have your, your outputs. So this, uh, so I'm gonna run the transform. So you might notice that this uh, visual here, it only goes from January up to March. Uh, that's because when you're running through the transform, it only, it, it like pre-populates with a small bit of the data so that you can easily kind of run through. Uh, and then when I actually do the transform, uh, you'll see that we have the complete data set of like wind speed, precipitation, and temperature. Um, great. Uh, yep. Yeah. So let's have a look at the weather that we have. What we really want to do is we want to be able to, um, to combine that. So uh, you'll have seen that I made, well, when I saved that visual earlier on, I saved it as a daily counts line. So now I'm going to use that to actually create the, the visual again, but I've just given it, um, I've just basically specified the type of data that I want, to, th this subset of data that I wanted to use. You don't have to, again, the, the screen's not fab, but here we are. So this is it. Um, and again, just to remind everyone what we're looking for is why this happened. So I'm gonna have to fly through this because I'm running low on time. But here is, uh, here's my, my final result from my weather data. So you can look at this um, and just maybe try and have a guess, or you could do something clever and, you know, like what you want to find out is where there was kind of outliers here within this actual data itself. Uh, you could guess, or you could do some kind of analysis, which is always preferred. Um, so here I can go and run this. Oh no, a carefully contrived error. Um, <laughs> so I've hit an error there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the quick debugger, which is going to tell me that you know, the full like trace through of my, my stack. So in weather outliers, what were my inputs? Uh, where did the actual error happen? Oh, in this weather smooth function, same thing. And then finally I get down to weather average by date and I can see that the error was this, this little guy here. So my function was weather average by date. So let me just, uh, whoop. oh yeah, here we go. Um, so that's my function. If I hover over, it'll give me a little bit of information about what that function is uh, because I documented it, as everybody ought to. Um, and I can actually open it up and have a look at it. So this is, again, this is that documentation, uh, this kind of syntax that lets you kind of have that pre-population in the thing. Um, and I can see that there's, uh, th this is the function that I was looking at a second ago, and I've got this little orange dot here, which is trying to tell me something. This is the linting. Uh, so when I go and I hover over that dot, it's telling me that I have an undeclared variable. So there's a good, really good chance that this was my, my error. Um, but, you know, what happens, you know, like why, why didn't I catch this error? Well, if I had run my tests, I would have seen that it failed uh, and I probably would have caught that error. But for some reason, I, I went commando and did not. Um, so there's a good chance that this probably worked at some point since I've built an entire workflow on it. So let's have a look at the history. Um, it turns out that Matt, Matt did not do a good job here. <laughs> he's, after, he's after wrecking everything. Um, but it wasn't so bad before. Um, so I could, I, could, I could look at these together. I could do a comparison. But I mean, it's, I think we can all see what the problem is. Um, so I'm just going to revert to that. So you'll see that that function now has this little M beside it to let me know that, you know, 
this is updated in my in the workspace that I'm working in, but I haven't actually pushed that change. So if I want this to not be broken next time, I should probably commit that at some point. Uh, but I'm going to continue on. And now when I actually run that, you'll see that I don't get my errors, I get my results, which are my outliers, as I wanted to find. So if I plot those, I can see um, I can see these like weather events overlaid with the actual, that's what I plotted, the weather events overlaid with the um, with my, my daily taxi uh, data. Uh, and I can see pretty clearly here that there's some big temperature event uh, or wind event that, that happened and that coincided with that. A little bit of uh, internet sleuthing and I find out that there is a pretty big blizzard uh, on between those days. So that's that was my main cause. I've kind of taken it from install the whole way through. Um, and, you know, I, I, I combined data from different data sets. I, I did um, I, some, some analysis on it. I, I fixed some bugs. I committed some code. I did all of the good things that you're supposed to do uh, as a data scientist. And then finally, I can present all of my results to, uh, to my boss or whomever and kind of show them this combined view. Uh, over here, actually, this is plotting all uh, 68 million data points, um, and this is just on my, you know, my little Mac. Well, it's not that little, but uh, just on my laptop, and I can kind of go and present this to, you know, whoever, uh, whoever it was that really cared about this. But I'll just quickly reiterate what uh, Mike was saying that um, these are now available for download. Um, there is some training at this point here. Uh, we'll send out a blast to let people uh, know just for sure to the K4 list box uh, if anyone wants to get it and play with it, which I recommend, and more to come.